Three cars at the same time, who would go first here? Three. How many of you say three? Who says three? The answer is three, because look. You see, car number three is the car on the right of the car on the right. See, two is on the right of one, three is on the right of... See, and most people don't realize that. A lot of people, and I've seen you drive, car number one and three think they should go at the same time, right? They go at the same time and say, I got a blocker now, I got a blocker. <laughs> you run interference for each other. So you should yield to the car on the, the farthest right, right, which will be number three. So three, then two, then one. Four cars at the same time. Guy with the biggest car goes first, all right? You got one of them big boats? You let them go. Hey, you go. You deserve it. You pay so much for gas. So, uh, no, in this case, somebody would let somebody go first. It's a very rare case to have four cars there at the same time. But let's say you have this, and I'm the nice guy on the road. I'm going to let everybody else go first, you know, because in Louisiana, that's the way it is. I mean, Louisiana, you get to four-way stop and go, no, you go first. No, you go first. People behind you, no, you go first. You go first, you know. So, um... I'm going to be like car number one or whatever. Or I'll be car number three, and I'll say, no, I'm going to yield to you. You go ahead and go first. So then it becomes a three, two, one situation after car number four is gone. Okay? Everybody got that? So always yield the right away to the cars on the right. Validation question number nine is C. Mark that one down. Well, somebody was uh, asking me a little bit earlier um, about where I'm from. I'm from a small town called New Iberia, Louisiana. It's two words, New Iberia. And um, uh, it's where all the Cajuns live in that area, Lafayette, New Iberia, that area. Um, Cajun people are a group of people who left France a long time ago. Then they went to Canada, and they lived in Canada for about 150 years and picked up all their customs. But then they were kicked out of Canada because they didn't want to change their religion. They were all French Catholics, and they said, you have to be Protestant. And they said, no, so they kicked them out. That's basically the story. We've been kicked out of two countries, okay? All right. <laughs> I told that story one night at the improv, and this lady came up to me after the show, and she goes, Oh, Stephen, I love your show. You're so funny. Are you Jewish? And I know she wasn't paying attention, so I said, Yes, ma'am. I'm the first Cajun Jew. So I, can't, I can't wait to get home. I got me some matzo ball gumbo cooking at home right now. Anyway, when I'm on stage doing comedy, I love to tell stories about my Uncle Boudreaux, one of the funniest dudes you will ever meet. He's about 65 years old. Always wears a big hat. He's about this tall. Real rascally guy. Says what's on his mind, no matter what, man. So anyway, my uncle is so happy that I'm teaching people how to drive. Because he's the one who taught me how to drive back in New Iberia. I'll never forget the first time we were driving in his pickup truck. Everything was fine. He's driving. We get to a red light. He goes right through the red light. <laughs> I said, didn't you see that? It was a red light. He said, yeah, pa, now I seen the red light. Don't worry about them red lights. My uncle taught me how to drive. My uncle never stopped for a red light his whole life, that man. My uncle's the best driver in the whole world. Next red light, right through it again. Shoom, I said, look, another red light. He said, I'm telling you, partner, don't worry about them red lights. My uncle don't stop for no red light, neither me. One red light after another, he wouldn't even slow down. We got the green light, he slammed on the brakes. Hey! I said, look, it's green now. He said, yeah, I see it, partner. That's my uncle coming through the intersection. Let me talk for a minute about the concept of right of way. The best way to think about right of way is as something you must give up or yield in certain circumstances. See, it is your responsibility as a motorist to do everything possible to avoid a collision. And that means never assuming in any situation that you automatically have the right to move ahead or make a turn or maintain your speed and that other vehicles must yield or stop for you. That's why when we talk about who goes first at a four-way stop, we say that the car on the left has to yield the right of way to the car on the right. We do not say that the car on the right automatically has the right of way. That car is as responsible as any other car for the safety of all the vehicles in that situation. What the law states is that the car on the left must give the other car safe passage through the intersection. The spirit of the law is meant to create a driving environment where we all treat each other with courtesy rather than trying to claim some special privilege. What are some other situations where you're required to yield the right of way? Here's an obvious one. When you approach a yield sign, you're required to yield the right of way to traffic on the road you are trying to enter across. How about emergency vehicles? When you see a vehicle displaying flashing lights or you hear a siren, you are required to yield the right of way to that vehicle. You yield the right-of-way to pedestrians in a crosswalk 
or to oncoming traffic when you're trying to make a left turn. But another example of right away is letting someone into your lane when you're in a traffic jam. It's about extending courtesy to others. When we all treat each other with respect, an otherwise chaotic situation becomes orderly and manageable. Just remember that we all share the same responsibility to keep our roads safe. Even if other vehicles are required to yield the right of way to you, it doesn't mean you should be any less careful. This is the end of Section 1. Please stop the program and access the network.